Hey everyone, it's uh, Pup Twigs here from Orlando, Florida, and joining me today, I've got uh, Sterling the Stink Pup here from Orlando, Florida as well. How are you? I'm good today. How are you doing? I am doing really good. I'm glad you were able to, to come over and be a part of this. I've been wanting you to be a part of it for quite some time. So Yeah, me too. Thank you for uh, inviting me over. Anytime, anytime. So, first thing i like to find out is about the origin of and the uniqueness of all of my pups that we interviews their hoods mm -hmm. and then also uh, i know the name goes pretty much with your hood so how did you come up with all of that yeah so um i've always loved like the steampunk style so um i wanted to pay homage to that in some way um so i thought maybe i could make like a pup persona out of it and so i researched some like classic authors like you know hg wells mm -hmm. and jules verne and then I found another one. He's actually a cyberpunk author. Um, his name is uh, Michael Bruce Sterling. Okay. And um, I wanted also a, like a unique name, and that seemed to be the unique name that I found. Um, so I really went with it, and I really liked it. Uh, it's, it's uh, you have got one of the most unique pup hoods that I've seen, and, and we always know when you're uh, coming in the room because we know exactly who that is when, <laughs> when you have your hood on. <laughs> yeah. Got like a little icon of my goggles on top of my hood and things like that. Oh yes, so. oh yeah. <laughs> so how long have you been a pup now? Um, I've been a pup actually for three years now. Okay. Um, started I think uh, during the pandemic. Yeah. Just something that came about. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. In the midst of doing nothing and found <laughs> it, I guess. <laughs> well, in, in those three years, what has been the easiest for you, and then what has been the most difficult? Um, the easiest thing for me, I think, is connecting with other people who share like an, an affinity for the culture and things mm -hmm. like that, because um, it really is a culture. Yeah. Um, and just to like um, network with people, because uh, for a while I was actually on tour. Um, I was a, a head carpenter of a tour, and I was a swing um, oh, really? in the crew, so I was uh. on tour for about a year, and I would post on my story on my Instagram and I would just see who was in the city that I was in and I would network with people and network with oh, pups that's... and I would try to meet as many as I could on the road yeah. um, with little free time that I had. Um, mm -hmm. It just felt like I wanted to create a sense of community mm -hmm. um, and almost like what you're doing now, like interviewing, but not really interviewing, more like hanging out yeah. and seeing like where they came from and how they came into the community and things right, like that. Right. Um, seeing how they like being a pup and um, if they had any events that were going on that week that I was there or something like that, just um, seeing if I could partake in them or meet other sure. people who were in the area too, uh, people who I maybe haven't reached out to before mm -hmm. or never met or didn't know existed. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to like make that collaboration and uh, see people. So you probably got to meet pups all over the place while you were getting to do that. Definitely. I met uh, quite a quite a bit of them actually. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, when you think about our community and you've been in it for three years, is there anything that you would want to change about it? Um, I wouldn't say anything about the community itself. I think it's beautiful um, how you express yourself. You know, there's no wrong way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I think it would be um, how others who aren't in the community view this community okay and educating them and because a lot of people uh may might be scared of it or you know that a lot of people are um scared of what they don't know yeah so i think maybe changing that dynamic a little bit and getting it more mainstream so that people can understand the community itself um it's not a scary place i mean it can be scary can in be, some yeah. places um and it's not for everyone. I get that. Right, right. Um, but I think just changing that, that dynamic of, okay. of like how people see us. And that that's that's something I would want. Just, yeah. just yeah. Sometimes we're frowned upon. And right. so it's even like uh, during Pride this year, Scout we did like a, he like organized a, a, a visibility walk during Pride yes. because some people think that you know puppies shouldn't be at Pride and keep kink, kink out of Pride and things like that too, but. I think as a community, um, being a pup is so much more than kink yeah. to me. Um, and it, it used to be just that. 
mm-hmm. but be, uh, because it's being like modern and uh, more mainstream, it's it sort of changed the definition of it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, some people use it for kink. Some people use it to just escape the world. And I think that's important because we all need something to escape the world. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Especially nowadays. <laughs> um, so I think that's important. And I love how it has progressed over the years from mm-hmm. being, you know, stemming from the leather community and things like that and to where it is now. And I can't wait to see, like, the, the future of it and where it goes from there. Yeah, because I only see it getting bigger and bigger as it, as it progresses. So. Yeah. What advice would you give to a newcomer for this? Um, let me see. I wrote down some stuff uh, just so I wouldn't forget because I wanted to touch on some things. But um, I would say uh, don't uh, start small. Okay. Uh, I would say don't go all in with like spending all the money and you know spending whatever. I say like dip your toe in it a little bit and mm-hmm. see if you like it. And if it's not something you like, then you know you can always move on. But if you like it, I think you should know you should go for it because yeah. it can it can get pretty expensive pretty fast if you want to go down that route of having gear right things like that you don't need gear to be a pup but it, it does help for me it, anyway it helps with the, the headspace yes. getting in there and things like that but you know it's different for everybody mm-hmm. so um puppies can don't even have to have hoods you know you can right. still be a, a puppy in that headspace and yeah. not have a hood That's, right? that is true because we all know it does get expensive yeah <laughs> So, so what brings you the most joy out of, you know, your puppy headspace? Um, for me, it's meeting so many different people. Mm-hmm. Like I said, when I was on tour, and even here, there are so many puppies who live in Orlando yes. and on the and the greater Orlando area. And I think it's just uh, creating community with them and having a great time, no matter what. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love that part of being, you know, just expressing yourself. And having the people express themselves too, and we're all accepting of each other. That's right. We sure are. So, what brings or uh, what are your favorite play toys if you have any? Um, I don't particular. I mean, I do have toys that people have given me, but mm-hmm. I don't. I haven't really. Um, I wouldn't probably go out and buy any mm-hmm. toys. Um, but I do like squeaky toys. Mm-hmm. Those are fun to play with and annoy people with. So, <laughs> <laughs> I do like balls too. Like you know, like tennis balls, things like that. Yeah. Um, so those are fun to play with. Um, grew up on sports. I'm not really a sports person now, but, right. you know, growing up on sports and baseball and things like that and, and bowling and soccer, you know, you just have a, an infinity for, yeah. for sports ball toys. And that's okay. <laughs> you, you can do that. So kind of on more of a, a serious note, what, what has this persona done for your mental health? Um, before... Before I became a pup, um, and still even now, I'm uh, considered like an introvert. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it has boosted my confidence in meeting new people and trying new things. Um, Never used to go out clubbing. Mm -hmm. Um, This wasn't a thing that I I never went to gay bars. I never went to, um, maybe I dabbled a little bit in college, but other than that, I, I wouldn't go out of my way to go um uh had never been to pride up until like two or three years ago um i just didn't feel confident enough didn't feel mm-hmm. i don't know it just but ever since i became a pup i sort of taken me out of my shell a little bit um it helps with my communication skills meeting new people and putting it out with the effort to meet new people yeah um, um my shyness kind of disappears a little bit more and i love the uh the anonymous nature of it yeah yeah um it's really nice because <laughs> you can it almost feels like a protective blanket almost it is. Or i agree um i don't know something like that and and i ne- never saw the shyness because i've only known you as as sterling mm-hmm. and i can tell that you're well liked in the community because anytime you walk into a room it's just everyone just flocks to wherever you are, which is awesome to see. Yeah. So I, I know the, the community loves that you're here. So Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad to be here too. And um, I can't wait to meet more people. Well, and... I'm with you on that one. Yeah. So, so what's one thing you wish you had known before you became a pop? Or maybe there's nothing. Um, how expensive was it? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, gear is expensive, and there's so many 
good things out there that I want. And, uh, and I think it goes also back to like body positivity too. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. you want to buy things because you look good in it and it boosts your confidence, mm-hmm. which is also why I got into pub space as well, because the confidence, like my confidence has increased in, in my body and like body positivity and things like that. So, um, yeah, I just love it. So much. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. So I know you mentioned sports when you were younger, but what kind of hobbies do you have now? Um, I'm, I've always sang, so I've always been in choir, I've always been, I've always done theater and things like that, I play the violin, I've oh, always wow. been musically inclined, so singing is one of the things I do a lot, in the car, in the shower, or in a show, or something yeah. like oh, that. Yeah. Um, I'm also really into cosplay, um, oh, that's cool. I haven't done that many cosplays, um, I sort of got into it during, like, the pandemic, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, I like cosplaying. That's also a very expensive hobby. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so what about pets of your own? Do you um, have any? I actually don't have any pets. No now. pets. Just the, the human-sized pet at home. And basically. that works. <laughs> so so I know you frequent the, the events happening here with Barking Out Back and, and all those types of things. Mm-hmm. But do you ever go to any other places uh, uh, around or out-of-state events that... Uh, that are going on for the pup community? Um, currently, I haven't really gone out to any on the outskirts of Orlando, just okay. the uh, Orlando Houndtown stuff. Mm-hmm. But when I was on tour, I would see if there was any mm-hmm. events that were happening around the city that I was in, with the people and the puppies that I met out there. So um, hopefully the next year I can plan some other stuff to go out because I do want to go to other people's prides yes. in different states and things like that and see some good friends that I met on the road. So hopefully in the new year I can make those plans. Good, good. So now comes the time where you get to turn around and ask a question to the next pup that I interview. Yes. What question would you want to ask them? Um, let me see. I had one ready. <laughs> um, I think. I said, um, if you could go to any pup event anywhere in the world, not thinking about the cost, where would you go? Oh, that's a good one. I'd be curious to see. Yeah, because I know there's, you know, there's like kink festivals and like cons and things like that. So, you know, you never know. Going to like any, any furry cons or anything like that, mm-hmm. Mal or Folsom or Hustle Ball, if you're into that sort of thing. But um, yeah. Like that. Well, that, that's a, a definitely good one. I mean, my, I ultimately want to go to Folsom. Yeah. I don't know when if I'll get to, but that's the one place for me. Yeah. So uh, your question was from Pup Echo out mm-hmm. of Key West, Florida, and he wanted to know what do you think about or think of the pup community as it is today? I love the pup community. Um, there are so many people in it and mm-hmm. so many that come from so many different walks of life. You know, you've got French pups, you've got German pups, you've got American pups, you know, you've got so many different people that you can just meet across any part of the world. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's like the, you know, LGBTQ plus, you know, community. It, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so cool that we can have a community that we can um, come together and just share the same affinity for the same culture. Agreed. Awesome. So, so what if other pups wanted to reach out to you? How how might they reach you? Um, you can go to my Instagram, uh, uh, Sterling. Well, I don't even know my own Instagram. <laughs> Most of us don't. <laughs> uh, Steam Pup Sterling. Uh, that is my just one word. Um, you, can, you can go find me there. Um, I do also have a T-shirt shop. That's uh, what I was going to ask about next. Yes, uh, Sterling's underscore steam underscore shop all right so i do make custom t-shirts if you want to check out my shop there and um i like giving back to the community so 10 percent of every sale goes to a nonprofit of the oh month. that's cool um right now we are sponsoring the pride foundation um we've also sponsored uh the trevor project in the past and some other nonprofits. Oh, so yeah, ten percent will go straight to a nonprofit for the month. Very good. Yeah. I, I definitely want to want to look at your shirts and and maybe get us some because oh, that's yeah. a, that's always a, a good thing to to go to charity. Oh, for so. sure. Yep. Gotta give back in any way that I can, mm-hmm. you know, and community outreach and things like that. 
um, because I know it's hard to get out there and do some outreach, but uh, any little bit helps. So, Mm -hmm. so any last words? Um, thank you for doing this podcast. This is amazing. Um, I'm so glad that you came to me and um, let me record something with you. Well, anytime. I, I love doing this, and I look forward to every time. Whether it's going to be on a Zoom or here live, it's, I look forward to every single one of them. It's a lot of fun. All right. Well, on behalf of uh, uh, Twigs and Sterling, we're going to sign off here. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.